Now Parallel can do more than that. It's also brilliant for making these small scripts that system administrators make all the time and that they are never going to use twice. So here we have some zip files and I would like to unpack these zip files into a directory. Uh, it should be called the same as the file, except I want the .zip removed. So what I do now is I list the zip files, put it into parallel, then I make a directory called the, the name without the .zip. I go into that directory and then I unzip the file, which is now in dot dot, right? Because I entered the directory. And as you can see now, we have the, the directories here created and um, it has been unpacked into each of its own directory. Another neat thing about Parallel is the way that it can group output. So here we have an example. Here we trace route to Debian.org. Um, and you will hear trace route gives you the routers that you go through to get to Debian.org. So we will go through these eight routers to get to, to Debian.org down here. If we run several of those uh, in parallel, like here, so we do a trace route to Debian.org and a trace route to freenetproject.org. We can see that the output is mixed up. It's very hard to see which one our over here is from Debian.org and which one is from freenet.org. Um, and Parallel can help you do that. So here we take the Debian.org and freenet.org and have that as an input to parallel, and then we simply run trace root on each of these arguments. And there you have it. Uh, if you scroll up, we can see first we got the output from Debian.org, and then we got the output from freenetproject.org. These were run in parallel, but parallel made sure that the output is saved and only printed on the screen when the job is complete. Now this time we had uh, Debian.org first, uh, followed by Freenet project, but sometimes that will go the other way. And here you can see if I run it again, Freenet project.org will come first. Sometimes you want to avoid that and GNU Parallel has an option to keep the order. So this will keep the order so that uh, the output from Debian.org will come before the output for freenetproject.org. And as you can see, the, the output for freenetproject.org was the last one. And even if we run it again, you will see that uh, the output for freenetproject.org will continue to be the last one. You can see it's still down here because um, the Debian.org is first. Because GNU Parallel does not mix the output, you can actually use the output of GNU Parallel to, as input for other programs. So let's uh, do here for an example and see how many hosts are responding to ping. So what we, the basic idea is that we send one ping package to a host and then we get a reply back. And the important line here is the one starting with 64 bytes. So. Um, what we are interested in is in lines like these. We want to run this um, on uh, 255 hosts. So here we run in parallel 255 jobs and the numbers from 1 to 255 will be put in here. And we will then send a ping to each of these in parallel. Then we will take the output and grab that for 64 bytes and we will count the number of lines and we will see there's 112 alive. You don't have to tell Parallel uh, if to the number of jobs to run in, in, in Parallel directly. You can simply say, Parallel, please run as many as possible. The zero will run as many as possible in Parallel. And in this case, it will run 255. And um, usually you should have no problem running 500 jobs in Parallel. If you get more than that, Parallel will still work. Uh, but it will delay the jobs until some of the jobs has completed. Another thing you can do is using multiple arguments. That's more or less the thing you know from XArcs. So 
let's create the directories that's called test dash one to three thousand dot dir. Um, so let's go into this directory and just make sure it's completely clean. So what we're going to run is something similar to this. So we take the numbers one to ten, we substitute that in here, and we run mkdir on that. So let's just do that. Um, so instead of doing it for 10 numbers, we're doing it for 5,000 numbers. So this can be, um, some of this time spent here is spent on spawning mkdir. Um, it would be faster if we could put the directories immediately behind here. We can see this takes around 17 seconds. So let's just try this again, but instead we're going to put um, all the directories behind it. So you can see we put all the arguments here behind. Instead of running 10 uh, invocations of MKD, we're only running one. So let's try that again and see how long that takes. As you, as you can see, that's way faster. Uh, I almost couldn't press enter before it completed. Sometimes it's interesting to call GNU Parallel from GNU Parallel. So one example is here. Let's say we want to make uh, a directory. Uh, we want to make 100 directories called top-1 to 100. And in each of these directories, we want a subdirectory called 1 uh, to 100. So let's just clean up the directory. And there. What we do here is we take the 1 to 100, we put it into parallel. And we tell parallel use the at sign, the double at sign, um, as a substitution string. So this this version of uh, this invocation of parallel will substitute the double at sign. So it will substitute here, and it will substitute here. And then this outer version of parallel will do this. It'll make a directory, and it'll then run uh, give the numbers to one to a hundred to. Uh, parallel, which is another parallel, which will then make a hundred directories, and it'll do that with a hundred, put the hundred uh, directories on a single line. And just to check that we actually have that, so this uh, one directory is the current directory. The hundred is the sub uh, is the top directories are these, and the ten thousand are these. Finally, I would like to thank you for watching. If you like GNU Parallel, please post this video on your blog or on Twitter or whatever you use to connect to your peers. Please join the mailing list at uh, the GNU website. Um, you can also write a request or write a review for your favorite magazine. You can even build a package for your favorite distribution, or you can invite me for, uh, as a speaker for your next conference. If GNU Parallel saves you money, please donate to the FSF. That will help not only the development of Parallel, but also free software in general. You can find GNU Parallel at this website.